uh, this morning, we're going to be uh, in the book of Jonah. I know everybody, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Jonah? The whale. The whale. Or where is that? But it, it, it's, it's in there. But we all, we, we hear these these. These stories, it seems like it's in children's church when you're growing up and in Sunday school, you hear about all these little tales about the, you know, this guy named Jonah and this whale that swallowed him up and spit him back out onto the shore. And, and, and you look at the stories of like uh, Noah's Ark and, and we see, oh, it's just all these animals just happy on the ark. I mean, it, it, it isn't like that, okay? They give you the good stuff when you're a kid well, it really was a lot deeper than what we make it. Oh, and then there's a rainbow, and everybody's happy now. No, everybody died, okay? Can we just say that? Everybody was wiped out. It was horrific. It was a, a major upheaval of the world. And we, we turn it, oh, he had all the animals, and he's on a big boat. They're all happy. Hey, somebody had to clean up after those animals, okay? It was not a pretty picture. But in children's church and in, in Sunday schools, we, we, we hear these stories and we think, well, I got that one down. I know that story, Jonah and the well, you know, whatever. It, it's not like that. We want to see why was he swallowed by a well. And we're going to be in chapter 1 today of the book of Jonah. And it is obviously about Jonah. Now, Jonah was, he, he, he came, he, he followed in after Elijah and Elisha had gone, you know, gone on. Jonah steps into the scene and he comes on the scene. He's now the new prophet uh, in the northern kingdom because the kingdom of Israel was divided. They had Judah and Israel that had split off to and he's in the northern kingdom. And their big enemy was this place called Assyria. And the capital of it was Nineveh. And he gets this word from God one day. Jonah's praying, whatever he's doing. Maybe he's, I don't know, chewing gum, whatever he does. And the word of God comes and says, I want you to go preach and talk to the people of Nineveh. I want you to go tell them that destruction is coming. Well, whenever he's warning, whenever God's telling him, I want you to go take the message to him. It, it, it's not a, a message of, I'm just going to annihilate you. It's a message of hope, actually. It's Turn from your wicked ways, and I'll forgive you, or else there will be destruction. There was hope in the message. But Jonah, he didn't like the Ninevites. He wasn't a big fan of Assyria. I mean, it, it, actually, in today, to, to kind of give you an image of what it would be like, it would be like asking somebody who just walked out of a, a concentration camp in World War II to go and preach in Germany and tell them, to, to, it, it, just repent and everything will be okay. And all will be forgiven. Well, Jonah didn't want to do that. He didn't want to give that message to him. You ever met somebody? I'm sure there's somebody in your life right now that you're thinking of, I hope that God never forgives that person. <laughs> Come on, we're some cold people, ain't we? I hope they just reap it, man. And God's calling you to go and talk to them and tell them about Jesus, and you're like, no! I ain't going to do it! And we grit our teeth and we refuse because we hope they get what's coming to them. Man, y'all are laughing because you agree, right? I'm like, this is bad, okay? You're supposed to be saying, that's not me. No, never. <laughs> but there's always somebody out there that you're like, man, God, sick them. Tear them up one side and down the other. I hope they burn for eternity because of what they said when we were four. <laughs> and you laugh at that, but I can literally, I, I've prayed with people. Uh, one individual, particularly this lady, that she was so scarred because when she was in kindergarten, a kid told her, you're ugly. In kindergarten. And she struggled with that forever. 
But all that stuff from the past that we just, oh, yeah, I don't want to, I'm not going to deal with that. I, I, it affects you. And she, in talking to this individual, she was like, I can still tell you her name. I hate her. <laughs> You're 40, give it up. <laughs> but how many of you know those scars, they don't just go away. That pain doesn't just go away. And Jonah's seen what, what Nineveh has destroyed. He's seen how they've just wreaked havoc on his people. And he doesn't want them to get off. He doesn't want them to, to God just to forgive them and everything be good. Yeah. But God called him. God called him. See, it isn't just a call that he was, that, that was given to him to go and, and preach and tell them. He was asked to forgive and preach and tell them. See, it's easy to tell people about Jesus when you don't have any strings attached. But when you've got to go tell somebody who's, who's abused you your whole life. When you've got to go tell somebody who's beat you down verbally, physically, you name it. They've wrecked your home. They've wrecked your marriage. And God's calling you to go and tell them about Jesus? It's hard to do. So don't just look at Jonah like he's just some sap, okay? He's just some guy that just don't get it. Because he gets it. But you ever been in a place where you'd just rather die than do something? That's where Jonah's at. He'd rather it not happen. He'd rather God just deal with those people. And if it means him dying to make it happen, he's good with that. He's good with it. Let's start. We're going to be in Jonah chapter 1. And I just want to read one verse, verse 3. And then we'll jump around a little bit. But in verse 3 of Jonah 1. This is after he's been called to go and, and preach to him. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for, the port, for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Can we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you today for you to take out your word today, for it to be that double-edged sword that cuts to the inside of each and every one of us. That it would read us today, Father. That it would penetrate into our hearts, into our lives, and it would cut away those things that don't belong. God, I pray that it just comes alive to us today, that we can hear exactly what you want us to hear today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jonah had a call of God on his life. But in Romans, we're told that all that, that gifts, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. It means he doesn't take them back. He's get, he, each one of us has a call on our life as well. Jonah was called to go and give a message to his enemy. And a lot of us are called to do the same. But a lot of us are just called just to share. Did you know that? Or maybe I shouldn't say a lot of us because it's all of us. We all have a call to go and proclaim the gospel to those that are lost, those that are hurting, those that have hurt us. We all have a call on our life. And God doesn't take the call away from you. He's called you. It's done. He has a mission for you to accomplish. There's a path that he's, he's laid out from the beginning for you to walk down. And this was Jonah's path. This was his path. This was his call to go and preach repentance to these people. But he didn't want to do it. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to go another way. It says he, he, he went down to Joppa and found the boat going the furthest place away. Because Tarshish, that, that's over by Spain, man. That's the end of their known world at this point. 
And they're ready. He, he's, he's like, I'm, I'm so not going to do this. I'm going to pick up everything, and I'm going to get as far away as I can so that God will not have to, I won't have to step in this. I won't have to do this. God, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to use somebody else. And how many of us, that's our same mentality. Uh, I hope God saves the lost, but just use somebody else to do it. I hope he reaches the world. I, I hope that, that, that my, my mother gives her life to Jesus. I hope my grandmother, I hope that, that, that my neighbor does, but just don't use me to do it because they'll think I'm different. They'll think I'm weird. They'll, they'll talk about me. They won't like me as much. And we come up with all kinds of excuses to run from God's call. And you say, well, I, I, I'm not hopping on a boat and going anywhere to get away from God. No, but we get in our cars and we drive to work. And whenever God's asking us to, to speak to someone, we have no problem turning the other way. When we see somebody in need, immediately we start to evaluate, don't you? I, I, I do this. I find myself doing it too. Well, they're like this because... They're in this predicament by their own hand, by their own doing, and, and I don't have to. And before we ever even ask God, God, do I help? It turns into we start justifying why I'm not going to. And Jonah started justifying, I'm not going to go to those people. I don't like them. I ain't going to put up with this. I, I, I don't want God to forgive them. But he was called. He hops on the boat, gets the ticket. They, they, he's, he's, I'm, I'm scot-free. And it says he goes down to the bottom of the boat, and it says he falls into a deep sleep. Now, this deep sleep he falls into is the same word for the same event where God put Adam into a deep sleep. He was out. And it says the, they get out there, and the wind and the waves start just wrecking this ship, and, and, and these... these Sailors are afraid for their life. They're, 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 they're crying out to any God they can. They're, they're, they, everybody's crying out to any different God they can think of. Somebody, please answer. I, you know, in reading this, I couldn't help but think of like Alcoholics Anonymous and uh, the God of your choosing, the higher power, whatever that might be. Well, I'm going to tell you, you call out to any other higher power but the one that exists, and you're going to still be sitting on that ship with the wind and the waves just rocking you and tearing you apart, and you can cry out to the light bulb all day long. Oh, light bulb, save me! I need you, light bulb! And it's not going to work. I remember watching this show one time, and it was reality TV, and this person got hurt on the show, and, and one of the, the commentators is like, uh, positive thoughts go in your direction. What? <laughs> not prayers, not may God help you or heal you. Positive thoughts. And that just made it all better because positive thoughts went out and the light bulb smiled. You can cry out to whatever God you want, but unless it's the God, you're not getting anywhere. The captain just happens to go below deck to find out what is going on here. This has got to be a... You ever been in the middle of a storm and you're like, this is definitely from God. Well, they could tell something is somebody up there is really mad at us. Oh, please stop a light bulb. But the more they called on the light bulb, he just didn't respond. So they go and wake this guy. How can you be sleeping in the middle of this? Remember Jesus sleeping down in the boat and the disciples were going through the same thing and they go down there and wake him up. Don't you care that we're all about to drown and die? And Jesus gets up and he goes up, rebukes the wind and the waves. Well, it's the same picture. Jonah's down in the bottom. They go wake him up. Get up. Who's your God? You need to start praying to him because we need some help here. We're willing to ask anybody. So he says, well, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew. 
And I serve the God that made everything, the God of the wind and the waves. And, and they're like, oh, you're the guy. What did you do? And they go and they, they get, the, you know, they draw lots, which, you know, sticks. And whoever got the short stick, you know, the, you're getting the blame, buddy. And how, you know, there's, nothing, there's no chance in this life. Everything's on purpose by God. And, and they cast lots. And, of course, Jonah gets it. And he's like, mm, yeah, it's me. But, you know, they, they probably already had a good idea it was him. Because when people are running from God, can't you see it? When people are running and doing something you, they know they're not supposed to be doing, it, ju it just, everybody knows it and they think they've got it, everybody fooled. I mean, we, we, we deal with people in recovery, okay? We've seen it. Oh, I ain't doing nothing. Jerking all over. The, oh, yeah. It ain't you. It's me. But the, here's Jonah. They call him up there. He gets a short straw and he tells them, yeah, I'm running from God. Well, we need you to make nice with God right now. And he's like, I ain't gonna, uh, I, God told me to go do something and I'm running. I ain't going to do it. And how many of us are in the same boat? God's calling you to do something. To step. It may be something so small, just a little step that he's asking you to take. And you're like, no, I don't think that's really you, God. And so a big storm comes and it starts raging against your life. And you feel like everything's falling apart. And he's still saying, I'm still calling you. Are you ready yet? Are you ready to give in? Are you ready to do what I'm asking you to do? Are you sure you're not ready? Because as Jonah, as they're talking and they're casting lots, they're afraid the ship's going to go to pieces. They start throwing the cargo over the side. And he tells them, you know what? This will all go away if you just throw me overboard. Why didn't Jonah just jump? I mean, I, I, I remember talking to, to Anthony one time and, and uh, talking about his past and the stuff he came out of. And, and he was like, man, to die would have been preferable. And I'm thinking, so what were you waiting for? You know, you, you, you're wreaking havoc on everybody else's life. You, you, you're making everybody else's life Hades, and, and you, you're going nuts over here, and you're just waiting. You're pushing everybody's buttons, just waiting for somebody to pull the trigger. Well, that's Jonah. It's my fault, guys. Kill me now. It'll all go away. And so they're like, no, no, no. We don't want it. Your God's mean right here, brother. He's trashing us. So they try to turn the ship around. They're trying to get back. We're going to go back and drop you back off at the shore. How do you know God had another plan? And they couldn't get anywhere. And they're, they're afraid the ship is going to snap in half. Not just sink, but just completely fall apart. So they're like, oh, Jonah's God. Please don't hold this against us, what we're about to do to this guy. But we're going to throw him overboard. And he says, if you just throw me overboard, all this will stop. The wind will stop, the waves will stop, and everything will be calm again. I mean, no, running from God, it doesn't just mess you up. It messes your family up. It messes up everything you're involved in. Everybody, every relationship you're a part of is strained. It's going under. There's problems there. You ever felt like the world was against you? That was Jonah. You ever felt like everything's coming against you? Everything's falling apart? I've been there, man. I've been there. And I finally had to say, okay, I quit. I'm through running. I'm going to answer the call. I'm going to go the way you're wanting me to go. I'm going to do what you're wanting me to do because, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. They took Jonah and threw him overboard. And it says immediately, 
everything stopped. And because they listened and they obeyed, it says, look at verse 16 with me. Put verse 16 up there. When everything quit, everything grew calm, verse 16 says, At this the men greatly feared the Lord. They're like, oh, it worked. He, he's real. It's not the light bulb we've been praying to. It's this Hebrew God. He's, he's listening. It says they feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. I don't know what else they sacrificed after Jonah. But they made a sacrifice to this God, to the, to the God that they didn't know, they, that they had just begun to get introduced to. They said, whoever this God is, that's the one that's real. And says so they made sacrifices and vows. You know what, do we still know what a vow is in this modern day of marriages that fall apart and nobody cares anymore? It's a promise. It's a covenant. They made a commitment this entire ship, this entire crew, all of these men made a decision to follow the one true God that day. And they were changed. They said they made a vow. And Jonah's just out. And you know the story, the fish comes, and we'll look at that later, but the fish comes, takes him, spits him out. But when you start following, running from God is not going to work. It ends badly. The ship gets beat up, torn apart. Your life is a mess because you're running. He's got a call on your life. He's called you. He's set you apart. He's declared you to be holy. And He wants you to live for Him. We talk about it all the time. Not just fire insurance. I don't just, he didn't just say, I'll just save you and you do your own thing. He said, I want to be your Savior and your Lord. I want to be the master of your life. I want to be the one who's calling the shots now. But as long as we try to call the shots, well, I prayed the prayer and I meant it really, really well. I had both fingers crossed in everything. I cried like four tears. It was sincere. But is he Lord? Are you listening to the call? Are you listening to the direction he's given you? The path that he's marked out for you? Proverbs tells us that a sluggard's path is blocked with thorns. But the way of the righteous is a highway. It's wide open. That's the way you want to be going. Now, why would it be blocked with thorns? We're told in Hosea the same thing about Gomer, Hosea's wife, and how she was a wayward woman and, and was cheating on her husband and, and just chasing after stuff. And Jesus, God says, I'm going to block her way with thorns. Why? Th what, what's the point here? He's like, if you want to keep going that way, it's going to hurt. If you want to keep going that direction, anybody, you ever been somewhere where they have those spikes in the driveway and, and you can go across one way? We went to Sitting Bull Falls not too long ago and, and when you're pulling in, they've got the spike, you know, the spike strip. So if you try and come back out the wrong way, it cuts your tires all to pieces. But go in the right direction, it doesn't bother you. Jesus, when he appeared to to. Paul, on the road to Damascus, we're told in Acts chapter 16 that when Jesus appeared to him, he's telling, he's given the testimony, he said, why do you persecute me? And he asks him, he says, why are you kicking? Why are you fighting? Why are you kicking against the goads? The prods, the, the things that keep you going in the right direction. You're fighting against what I have for your life, Paul. 
or Saul at the time. You're fighting against me. I, I, if you just go this way, it would be so much easier. But you're insisting on going the wrong way. And it's ripping you to pieces. Because he's wanting us to turn around and go the other direction. And he's making it difficult. He's making it hard. And that, he's throwing a storm in your path. He's wrecking your ship. Everything's falling apart. Because you're going the wrong way. To repent is to stop going the direction you're going and completely turn around and go the other way. Now it's just not just spinning the bottle and seeing which direction you're going to go next. It's following the king. It's following the Messiah, the master of your destiny. To follow. To let him be Lord. To let him call the shots, pick the direction choose the words that you speak stop fighting if you're getting jammed up on it in every direction everything's falling apart could it be just possibly maybe you're going the wrong direction if you drive down the wrong side of the road for too long it's going to end badly there's a way that he's already marked out, that he's already made it easy. And as long as you're going the right direction, there's no problems. As long as you're following where he's leading, he'll guide you through the minefield of life. But when you stop looking, stop following, and you start to do things your way, you may get stuck, or you may just wreck the ship. Are you going to follow? Because he's called you. He's got a plan already marked out for you from the beginning of the world. He looked down and said, I got this. But he also knows we're stiff necked, hard hearted people. And I like the fact that Jonah is already a prophet here. He's already a believer who refuses to go the right way. Because this is a perfect picture of most of us. We're believers. We even go to church, man. And yet we refuse to follow. I'm just telling you, you may have made it onto the vessel, you may have made it onto the ship, but there's some rough waters ahead. And you can turn it around. You can give in and follow. You can make him Lord of your life. You can let him be the master of your destiny. You just have to surrender. You just have to say, I'll answer the call. I'll follow where he's leading. You can run from God, but you can't hide. He sees it all. He knows right where you're at. You may be saying, I... I I don't know what he's wanting me to do. I'm willing to follow. I just, I don't know what he's asking of me. I can't hear his voice. I don't know what he's saying. Are you putting yourself in a place to listen? Because I can tell you, I can get myself so busy that I just move God right on over to the back burner. And all of the good stuff that I'm intending to, to fulfill in my life just, just doesn't seem to get done. And my life will be thrown around like a rag doll. Because I don't take time 
I don't make time to get into his presence, to praise him, to read his word, just to talk to him without complaining. And just let him talk to you. Are you ready to answer the call? Has your life been wrecked? Are you going through some things that that nobody would understand? Well, I'm going to tell you God does. He understands. He sees the storm that you're going through and He can speak into that storm and make it all go away. He can bring peace into the situation that as the Bible says, you can't even imagine. That doesn't mean storms won't keep popping up and bad things are never going to happen and everything's going to just be a bed of roses. But I promise you, when you start following, He gives you strength, He gives you peace, He gives you the endurance to get through anything that can come against you. And it just comes by answering the call and following where he's leading. Stop running from him. Turn around and run to him. Because I promise you, running into his arms is a lot better than jumping out. So where's your life today? Where are you at? How long, how far have you been running from what God's calling you to do? Because He can make it so easy. The thorns that you're fighting, the, 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 the life of just chaos can all just... It says in Proverbs... He'll make your your path a highway. He's opening up the traffic. Everything's flowing this direction. Just turn around and follow. I got the easy way. Are you ready to surrender? What is there that's in, what is it that he's asked you just to, to let go of and trust him? What's there? What's he speaking to you? You say, I don't know what he's asking me to do, but everything's a wreck. Well, we could pray for that. We can pray for that. We can turn the ship around. We can get this thing back where it needs to be. We can start following instead of trying to call the shots. Is that your heart today? Are you ready to give it all to Him today? To follow, to make your path instead of a prickly pear batch of thorns? Are you ready to take the way that He's called you to go and where He's calling the shots, He's leading you, He's guiding you, and you don't have to worry about all the other stuff. I don't know what Jonah was thinking whenever he said, just throw me in. I don't know why, what he was so afraid of, but I'm going to tell you, even though he got thrown in, God still made a way. And sometimes it gets a lot worse before it gets a lot better. But just make that decision. Answer the call that he has on your life and follow where he's leading. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come before you. You know our story. You know our life. You know the circumstances that we're in, the the waves that are pounding us. And God, we just ask you to, to speak into our lives today, to 
show us the direction you want for us. God, forgive us for trying to do it our way. Because our way just doesn't work. And God, I pray that you just reveal to each one of us where you're leading and what you've called us to do. If you're here today and you say, that is my life, just one big shipwreck after another. It's all in chaos. Everything's upside down and backwards and I don't know which way is up. Well, my God knows. The God I serve is the master of the wind. He's the master of the waves that are wrecking your life. And he could speak into your situation. And whatever you're facing, he's bigger. He's stronger. And he wants to bring you through it. Would you stand with me? If you're here today, and you're needing prayer in your life, prayer for the storm that's raging, for the, uh, the loss of direction. If you're just ready to answer His call, I want to touch the throne room with you today. I want to get a hold of Jesus with you today. So He can speak into your life. So he can speak destiny over your life. And if you're here today and you want to get a hold of him, he's here to be gotten a hold of. So while Bill's playing, it, it, and I know some of you are going to step out and some of you have things, places you need to go and do. And, and if you need to step out, we ask that you do so quietly. But.